the LLTV is not an easy machine to learn to handle. Before an astronaut ever actually flies a LLTV, he has trained in a helicopter for at least 100 hours. He has trained in an LLTV simulator, completing a detailed program, or syllabus, as the pilots call it. He has trained in a vehicle tethered to a large overhead frame. He has handled the LLTV mounted in a fixture where the vehicle will respond to certain flight commands. And he has powered up the LLTV engines with the vehicle itself tied down to become accustomed to the operation of the engines. Only after the considerable training, plus many briefings, is he ready to fly the LLTV. And in the total picture, this is but a small part of the training necessary to learn to fly the lunar module itself. Similarly, getting the LLTV ready to fly is no small chore. In the hangar before the flight, technicians check out system, electrical continuity, and electronic equipment. Further, they set the control gyroscopes, a task which in itself requires several hours of work. During the flight, several men will be the focus of ground operations. The flight director, who has command of the mission. The avionics flight controller, who monitors the equipment which controls the orientation of the vehicle. The dynamics flight controller, who monitors the LLTV flight trajectory. The jet engine flight controller, who keeps watch over the operation of the jet engine. The rocket engine flight controller, who keeps check on the operations of the rocket engines. Two telemetry technicians, who monitor the telemetry signals received from the vehicle. And an operations and procedures officer, who handles flight clearance and support coordination. Normally, the missions are set for soon after sunrise, when there is adequate light and wind velocities are not excessive. During the pre-dawn hours, the LLTV is rolled out of the hangar and to the liftoff point. Flight controllers, along with the pilot, have all been briefed earlier by the flight director on the mission plan and objectives. Okay, gentlemen, if I can have your attention. This is a lunar simulation flight from Mr. Reen. The altitude is 300 feet. And Phil, for your information, the wind's 20, 25 feet per second, basically out of the east, northeast. Dave? The uh, vehicle is sitting on this runway right now, and it looks like we probably ought to have the entire field closed, so when we get ready to take off, we may switch over to runway 17. Uh, the winds that I said are on the east and northeast. The pilot's been briefed to take off and hover into the wind about 50 feet. Probably will need a balance check at, uh, at that time. We'll move the vehicle down toward the 100 foot marker, and the screen will begin to climb to about 300 feet. Okay, you'll check the winds at that point. We'll give them sim clearance. We'll turn around downwind, turn the lunar sim switch on, we'll move comp on, and begin to sim down the runway this way to terminate the action down this area. Any questions on the mission at all? Any questions about the wind? Yes, Tim. Okay, that's it. The engines are service. The jet engine with conventional JT4 jet fuel. The rocket engines with peroxide fuel. The peroxide fuel is toxic, and the technicians must wear protective garments. The flight director, in the meantime,
stays in communication with the Ellington Air Force Base control tower to coordinate LLTV flights with other traffic. Flight director stays in touch with NASA weather personnel to check on weather conditions. Okay, uh, we've got the latest wind plot showing maximum winds 25 feet per second up to 400 feet. He makes certain that flight support personnel are on station. White Bird flight radio check. Flight, this is White Bird, read you loud and clear. Pedro flight radio check. Read you loud and clear. Crew chief. Loud and clear. Okay, 951, you can proceed with the checklist. Roger. Cockpit is secure, loose articles have been removed. I have the oxygen system checked and the two pins are out. Emergency throttle is in the normal position. Have circuit breaker 28 up. Correction, have circuit breaker 20 up. 28 is down. And I'm setting the T-handle friction at this time. Roger. T-handle friction has been set. All breakers are in except 28. Instrument lights will be off for this flight. I have the Doppler on and the altimeter is on. Setting the peroxide computer at this time, I'll set it for 784. Thank you. Battery is on, DC is off, and I have the AC on. ACS is going safe. Throttle is verified off, and we're ready. Thank you. Light off. Okay. Okay, the DC is going on. External power and air have been disconnected. The EGT is 532 and rising slowly. Oil pressure light just came on. The RPM is uh, 46. The oil pressure uh, is about 14. DC voltage is 28. Could you set the valve? The engine start. I'm standing by for attitude control check. Okay. Okay, and the area is clear. Area cleared. That air cleared, ACS to flight. And good control check. Point comp is on. Three to eight. ACS checks on. Good control Thank checks you. have been completed. Before takeoff, the gimbal lock is on. Cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff. Negative one on the each dot. Hands off for your balance. 15 feet per second. Okay. He has a plate. I'm hovering at 99 percent. Local vertical. Local vertical. Altitudes approaching 100. Left side, maybe about 30 percent. There's about a 9 degree cross. Climbing. Balance is good. Thank you. And the wind is creating 25. Clear for landing simulation. Okay. Is altitude is 300. Is Four fifty percent. Thank you. Approach forty percent. Go. Okay. Runner SIM switch is on. Camera's on. Okay. Approach. Speed should drop off now. Then. Sorry. Okay. Now I'm showing a crosswind here of uh, some magnitude. It should be coming forward now. Okay. Showing 32%. Okay, everything looks good. Auto throttle looks good. Okay, gimbal lock is on. Here's the yellow